the harbor of safety. You, you know when those big ships go in the harbor like that? The most dangerous place to be when a storm comes is in the harbor. And there's some, they call them safe havens, but when a storm comes, it's not safe. And as I was singing that song, I was thinking about it. Now you're saying, how you get that? Well, sometimes you're so safe when a storm comes, it kills you. Every now and then, you got to push back out into the storm to be protected. Wow. I got about 15 minutes, maybe 20. I'm just so thankful. Praise God. I'm just so thankful. Sometimes when you become thankful, people think you're cocky, but I'm not cocky. I'm just thankful. And I don't mind, I don't mind bragging on my Jesus, period. And I don't. I'm going to brag on them every chance I get. You say, oh, well, you just think you something. No, I, I know he's something. So. And so I brag on him. I can brag about anything about Jesus because he can back up everything I'm boasting about. But I am so thankful for you that are here. Praise God. It's always a privilege to come together. And I know you don't have to have me, and I probably don't have to have you, but we are here because we have a common need. We do have to have him. As we come together, we are not, I know you can have church without me. And believe it or not, I can have church without you. But it's one thing we can't have church without, is without Jesus. So I don't ever want us to miss the fact why we're here. It's not just fact that you have to be here to be here but I like it when we come together because we all have one common need just one one common need I, I made one guy already mad this morning before I make you mad so don't worry if you get mad now you were not the first one today I had one come to me this morning he got mad because I wouldn't do what he wanted me to do. Let me just say this. I told him, I said, he said, I don't want to stay for church. I just want me something to eat. I said, we having a dinner today. It's free. No, I don't want to sit down and eat with y'all. That was your first mistake. <laughs> I said, you mean you don't want to break bread with us? No. But well, now I'm through. I said, because you're going to find out one thing about God. He'll never make a covenant with nobody he can't eat with. It's in the book. I'm always saying the wrong stuff, ain't it? And if I don't say it wrong, you're going to hear it wrong and say it wrong. I am not heartless. I, 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 I want to help people. Don't get me wrong. I love helping people. I don't know of any joy that's more joy given than serving people. Matter of fact, the joy of the Lord is service. Yeah. Thou good and faithful, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And he made a comment, and well, your, your spirit is wrong. Yeah, okay. Whatever you want to say. But I'm offering food. Now I'm offering my fellowship. I feel bad that you can take my money, but you won't fellowship with me. Well, anyway, let's go. Matthew chapter 16. And it says everybody get mad all at one time. But if you happen to be mad today, don't worry about it. You weren't the first one that showed up mad. But I hope before we leave, you'll be glad. Because what I want to preach about today, if he can't make you happy, 
you're not going to be happy. Matthew chapter 16, 13, beginning. And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say about John the Baptist, some Elias or Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But he said unto them, Whom Say ye that I am. And I, I, I guess it is possible for some of us to have a God that's not personal. And it's easy to get caught up in an impersonal God that you really don't know. But I believe God is asking you, not, not anyone else. I, this message is not to anyone else. It's to you. A question in which I feel every saint has to ask themselves. Who is Jesus? Some say, well, somebody told me, no. Who is Jesus to you? Because if you don't know who he is to you, you're going to find yourself trying to serve somebody else's Jesus that may not be the right one. Precious God, I love you, and I thank you for the privilege you've given me and afforded us, afforded us today in this place that, God, you would minister by your spirit to us. Give us revelation and wisdom, Lord. Increase us as we increase our faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Who do you say I am? This was Jesus having a conversation with his disciples. They had just finished feeding some people, and somehow in their feeding, a misunderstanding came up. Maybe Jesus sensed a misunderstanding. And he has spoken to them about the leaven of the Pharisees. And they had maybe thought that the Lord was trying to talk against or speak against the Pharisees and the Sadducees or whatever. But Jesus was trying to bring them to a spiritual understanding by mentioning some natural things. In the Pharisees' order, they believed that there was going to be a resurrection. The Sadducees didn't believe that there would be a resurrection. There was time when Jesus confronted them and made mention of, of a man who died and left a wife, and she married his brother. He died and, married, and she married the next brother, and he died. Then they want to know who's going to be the husband of everyone when they get in glory. They never could understand the spiritual things of God when it came to the teaching that Jesus was giving them. And so even now, he realized that our thoughts about him is formed by schools we are taught in. I was telling this morning in Sunday school, I wish I understood baptism more when I first got baptized. I wish I knew more about it. I wish I knew what I was really, really doing. It's taken a long time to come to the grips of what happened to me. But that's not the message. Don't get scared. Boy, it's so quiet in here, man. 
I love it like that. Which my, I'm going to have church in my house with this choir. My kids ain't even talking. And so here we're talking about Jesus knowing how others have influenced their thoughts about him. He realized that most of everything we know or believe about Jesus, most of it is because somebody told us about Jesus. Most of everything that we're going to talk about when it comes to Jesus, we read somebody's book about Jesus. Even a lot of things that we say Jesus is, somebody sung a song and we sing their song without knowing the Jesus that they might, not, might be talking about or not talking about. Don't get scared. Over most of our life has been based upon information. Information has caused us to form opinions whether right or wrong. But the Lord realized one thing, is that here is a people following me. And he questioned them, who, who they say I am. He want to get the feel of the crowd. Because if you get the feel of the crowd, you kind of get the feel of each individual. Because you're in one setting, you know, most of the time because we all are here in this place right now is because there's some things we established that we believe alike. And most of the time is that we will not expand beyond what someone told us. And we will almost think that everybody told us about Jesus knew everything there was to know about. And so we base all of our knowledge about God not on an experience but by information passed on but from someone else. Amen. They had me quoting stuff when I came in. It wasn't even in the Bible. I thought it was. They told me, man, you know what the Bible says? You take one step, God will make two. And I was quoting that. I thought it was in the book. It was, they told me that so much. And I got to looking in the Bible one day. I never read that one place where it said, you take one, he's going to take two. Because you may take one step, he won't take none. Why well, it gets quiet like that? I love it. I love when they do that. They think it ain't there. You thought it was in there too, didn't you? You know the Bible say God helped them to help themselves. No reason why we say that, because we didn't realize what he came to do. You know why he came? Because you couldn't help yourself. So now why would he withhold from you something that he already know you couldn't do in yourself? Well, God said he helped those who help themselves. No, he ain't. He'll help those who trust in him. And when you get to trying to fix yourself, you're going to find out he can do in five seconds what's going to take you 50 years to get done, and you still won't get it done. So he's not, no, don't, now don't get me wrong. Some of you done ate that up because you said, oh, boy, that's good. I ain't going to do nothing now. But the Bible also says he gives you energy or strength to get well. So I don't want you to get it twisted here thinking I'm saying, well, you know, I'm just there, I'm just talking. No, I'm not talking like that. But what I am telling you this, there are things that we put in our mind because someone passed it on, and we got to putting it into our spirit, and we got quoting stuff ain't in the Bible. And, you know, oh, man, I, I know it's got to be in there because I, I heard it too much. I heard it all my life. Do you know how many things you've heard all your life that ain't true? whole bunch of stuff I heard all my life ain't true. But here Jesus realized. He realized their thinking had been influenced. So he wanted to see where they were. See, we can get influenced by people and not be influenced by God. 
Now, we can get influenced by even people we say are God's people and still not be influenced by God. God don't want you to follow people. He wants you to follow him. Uh-oh. So here is these people saying, who, who, do they, who do they say I am? What are they talking about in the community? Who, who do they say I am? Well, some say you're John the Baptist. Mm-hmm. So the ones say it's John the Baptist, they build a religion. Some say that, well, he, you, you Elias. Guess what they done? They built a church on Elias. Some say you're one of the prophets. Guess what they done? They built their church on that influence. But Jesus finally said, but now I need to ask you something real personal. Pete, come here. Who do you say? I am. I feel that God wants to ask each person here. I'm not, I'm not, He's not asking you to figure out who I think he is. But I believe God is trying to ask us a question. Who do you say that I am? When you talk to people, who do you say he is? Because you can't tell him, tell them who he is until you know who he is. Otherwise, you're going to go out telling people, well, you know what? My church preached this. My church believes this. I'm not asking you what your church believes. What I'm asking you, what do you believe in Jesus? Because Jesus is bigger than our buildings here. Well, you know, well, you know, uh, um, oh, my, church, my church don't believe in it. It's not what my church don't believe in. What does Jesus believe? What is he saying? Apart from what everybody else is saying, I want to know what he is saying. I don't want to know who your Jesus is. I got to know who mine. When I talk to you about Jesus, I don't want to tell you about what Brother Tetra was talking about, what Brother Tetra was Jesus. I'm telling you about mine. Somebody said, well, you know, I, I don't see it like you may not because you may not see the same Jesus I see, but the one I see. That's what I'm talking about. I can't tell you about what everybody said. Well, you know, my, oh, man, he, he was preaching for 70 years. He ain't never said that. I'm not living after him. I'm following after God. Some of you need to have a real revelation of who you say you believe in. Jesus said, who do you say I am? And if you don't, that's the reason why when you get in a pickle, you got to find a lot of people that believe like you to find your Jesus. But when I'm in a pickle all by myself, guess what? The same Jesus is there. I can pray he will answer my prayer because I will call up on him. I am not against, I know I am not against us coming together, lifting up Jesus and all that. I love praising God, but let me tell you one thing. The Jesus I know I can praise him without you. You ain't going to believe this. I get happy when you ain't around. No, I, I may say that wrong. You, I, even if I should say, yeah. Because I almost sound like I was happy when you gone anyway. But that's not what I'm saying. See, some people need other people to be happy. If you have not found happiness with you and Jesus alone, you still ain't happy. You can search the whole wide world over. You can go from Timbuktu. You can go over to Egypt, so anywhere. But if you ain't happy with Jesus where you're at right now, you ain't going to be happy. Well, you know what? They made me mad, so I, 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 I'm through. You can't make me mad enough. Huh? You, you can't make me that mad. I'm going to quit God because you made me mad. I'm going to give up my salvation because you made me mad. I don't care how mad you try to make me, friend. You ain't going to make me deny my Jesus. 
You can go ahead, pout up and all and get all angry. Yeah, you know. No, uh -uh. you don't know the Jesus. Huh? Somebody said, well, man, how did we smile like that? He always smiling all the time. You know why I'm smiling all the time? I got a constant Jesus. Some of us got that Jesus that when we're having a bad day, he move out. Yeah. You think I'm joking? I'm saying it's two heart attacks in the brain to him right now. Is that when, it, when they're having a bad day, first thing I'll say, well, I don't know where Jesus is. I'm trying to find you. See, you got one of them kind of, you, you, you got one of those kind of fair weather Jesus. See, but see, I have, a, I have a Jesus that when I'm in a storm, he takes me through a storm. Okay, when I'm in a Jesus and I'm walking in the river, he don't let it overflow me. Well, I got a Jesus that if I'm in a fiery furnace, he won't let it burn me up. That's the kind of Jesus I serve. I don't have a Jesus that keep me from everything. He does not uh, uh, exempt me from troubles. He don't exempt me from trials. He don't, no. But in every one of them, in every one of them, I know he's in there with me. And see, that's the kind of Jesus I serve. I don't get down. You know, some people go back and forth in their salvation. They don't know if they have a good time, they can swear they're saved. But if they're having a bad time, they swear, oh, I don't know what God's still with me now. I don't know what I can be saved. I don't know what God, he must have left me. Let me tell you something about this Jesus. He said, I will Even in Lane, we can mess it up. Can somebody tell me what never mean? Don't say I mean just because we have different definitions of it. We put never and then put some colons and all kind of commas. You know, he ain't gonna never leave you, but <laughs> did you read that? In? Did, did you? Was there a comma after that? He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And Lord, I'm with you all again. What does always mean? Do you, now, I know, I know you're sitting here, and, and you're snug as a bug in the rug. I know you're feeling good. But I also know myself. See, I've been in the same boat. I've been in places in God where, you know, I get to thinking, he don't love me no more. Where is he at? Things about to make you go crazy. I mean, all of a sudden you wonder, man, where is God? And if I didn't know him, I would allow everything around me to tell me he ain't around. If I didn't know anybody, I would think that probably there is a comma behind always and never. But I realize there is not one, and so I won't us to get introduced to a Jesus that's not up and down. He's not bipolar. He's not on Prozac or anything like that. I want to introduce you to a Jesus. He don't have nervous breakdowns. He's not worried. God never worries. And there's never anything coming up that surprises God. I have a God that has everything under control. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Some of y'all are seeing that Jesus. We think, man, we got people, they think the Democrats is the problem. They swear it's the Republicans the problem. When the Republicans going to come in next time, they're going to swear it's the Republican problem. And they're going to swear it's the Democrat problem right now. It's the Democrats. Is Republican. Can I tell you something? Neither one of them is going to straighten you out. Because God didn't come to straighten out a government problem. He knew it wasn't a government problem. He knew it was a human problem. And ain't enough senators. I don't care if you call yourself a Christian senator. You ain't going to fix this as a senator. You know who's going to fix this? 
Jesus. So as you get in there, get in your political discussion and get mad. Man, the government, man, they so messing us over. No, get out of that bondage and realize God wants to set you free to know who he is. And when you know who he is, you won't have to worry about who's in the White House or in the outhouse. It doesn't matter. I don't care who's there in the White House. I don't care whether you're Republican or Democrat. I'm telling you, the answer to this world's problem is not going to be voted on. But it's going to be something that somebody knew the God they serve and believed in the God they serve and told somebody about this God that we serve. Oh, praise God. That's why we have to know who he is. Not because of what somebody else said. But I know him because of what he has done here. I cannot even testify about what he's done in you. I can only testify what he's doing in me. Oh, praise God. See, many times that they came, when Jesus came, the problem was when he came, is that everybody was talking in their camps about what the Messiah would do when he come. They did not expect, they did not expect him to come like that. They could readily accept Jesus if he had been born in Bill Gates' house. They'd have been, they'd have been rolling out the carpet. They could readily accept him if he was the fastest gun in the West. If he looked like honest Schwarzenegger. They could accept that. But instead... He wasn't riding in a fancy chariot. He came riding on one of the most lowliest animals you could ride on was a mule. <laughs> and they looked at him, waiting on him to bust up, and they just knew in a minute, man, his biceps going to pop out. They kept waiting on him because here he's the Messiah, and, and, and see, sometimes... What has you so bound has your attention so great that you can't see the one who came to deliver you and how he'll do it. And so he's looking at this Jesus. They kept waiting on him. He's going to pull it out pretty soon now. Here we in the government. We got a government that's oppressing us. The Roman government is making us walk one, two miles, taking our coats and everything. I know I can't wait for Jesus. That's it. If he's the Messiah, let's see what he's going to do. So he came in. And the way I can see it in my mind, I can see him just walking slow all the time. The reason I know he walks slow, because he is slow. If you don't know that by now, you ain't lived long enough then. He is not a microwave God. Some of y'all been praying a long time for some things, right? Ain't you? Right. Didn't come yesterday, did I Told you slow. But I'm glad, though. Because he's slow to anger, too, though. <laughs> See, I, I, I mean, you want to be quick? No, nah, take your time, Lord. Yes, take your time. Don't, don't change your nature for me. <laughs> I don't want to be the first one to have that testimony. No, God is quick. <laughs> no, I like the long suffering of God. I love his slowness. But they didn't expect him to come to be manhandled. They did not expect that. They kept waiting. You know, even old Pete, he's sitting there looking at him. Here they come, snatching him. And you know, first thing he does, you know, he figured he'd take out the sword, and God may, he see the multiply fish in the load, probably going to multiply some swords. He cuts off a man's ear. And I remember what the Lord said. Put that thing up. Put that away. This is not how we operate. We don't, we don't take it by force. We're not here to kill. We're here to heal. We're not here to tear down. We're here to build up. And so he put the ear back on him, and, and now, I mean, Pete is in a, in a state of shock because he's expecting, you know, they take him off, drag him off. Pete's scared now. 
I wonder where they take it. Washington. And then he gets to a place where someone asks him, see, this is how you know when you don't know what you know. It's when somebody really asks you in the most inconvenient way, are you one of them? And he's he all around like, yeah, I go to church sometimes. Let's keep going. Yeah, and they say, well, you know, I, I know I ought to go to church more. I see you warming your hands around that fire. You don't want them to know you really that soul out to that. Yeah, and then they keep on pestering. Oh, are you one of them? No. No, I'm not. And now he's cussing. He's mad. And the reason he's angry is because he really don't know who he is. He's walked with him. He's seen miracles. But he still don't know Jesus. It is possible for God to have touched your life and you still don't know who he is. He showed us miracles and showed us all kind of things that should have helped us come to some concrete conclusions. Everything in your life is pointing to him. He's trying to tell you who he is. And you're running from the knowledge of who he is. And so we got this idea is that somehow people have convinced us about a Jesus that really don't exist. I don't get up every morning wondering whether or not I'm going to be saved. Because you know why? The one I believe in is a Savior. He didn't just save yesterday. He's a Savior today. When I wake up in the morning, guess where Jesus is still going to be? A Savior. I don't get up in the morning time wondering whether or not if I die today, I'm going to go be in hell. Boy, it getting quiet. I'm going to be saying the wrong thing again. Well, Brother Wilson, you ought, you ought to be worried about it. Why would I be worried about it? How can I worship and be worried? How can I come in here and lift my hands up and think, well, you know, maybe I, ain't, I mean, I'm, I'm worshiping, but I may, not be, I may be in hell worshiping God later. You know why I worship like I worship? You know why I sing like I sing? You know why I love God like I love God? Because I know he's here. He ain't leaving. He ain't going nowhere. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm not worried about him running out anywhere. And matter of fact, is that when you are in trouble, he's closer to you then than ever. The Bible says he's a good shepherd. Do you know what a good shepherd does? Some of you right now in here, you don't even understand how good a shepherd he is. You ain't even walking, but he's carrying you. A good shepherd goes into his flock. If he finds a sheep that cannot walk, he takes the sheep and puts it up on his shoulders and he carries it. Haven't y'all seen those pictures? They're real. Most of us here, if God wasn't carrying us, we wouldn't be here. It ain't because you have walked right. It's because God is right, and God is walking right. And we had this idea, well, you know, I, I, I know God. God don't dwell in no unclean temple. I'm going to tell you one thing, if you would, because I heard that when I came in. They had me scared to drink coffee. Uh-oh. See, some of y'all modernized. In the olden days, a lot of people, they preached against drinking Pepsi and Coca. Coca-Cola, you know that? And if you drink coffee, you was definitely. And without cream, you was too far gone. Now, now y'all laughing, but I'm just telling you the truth. And so they made that statement, told me, you know, God said he ain't going to dwell in an unclean temple. And I said, okay. So I'm, and the very people telling me this, they fighting sugar diabetes and eating, eating cake. I, I hate this. I, I hate to be like this. But if I can't help us, please, come on, come on, get, put your feet back on the ground here a minute. 
the stupid stuff we say. And you go back in the Bible and read that that's not what God was saying. Because if he don't dwell in the unclean temple, we're going to have to be really getting, we should be getting up every morning, going to the gym, exercising, drinking water, quit drinking pop. And all you people fighting sugar, quit eating them sweets like, like you know you shouldn't be doing. And then all of a sudden, you know, when your sugar diabetes get high, you're going to be trying to pray for healing. I got I to gotta let you go here in just a few minutes. I, hear what you need to understand. What God has sanctified is sanctified. You thought you sanctified it, but it was him that sanctified you. And when he sanctified you, he made you a temple he could dwell in. It wasn't based on you. It was based upon him. And so you cannot deny the fact is that if you understand who he is, you're not running around here talking about, well, you know, God, he ain't going to dwell in an unclean temple. No, you would tell people, you know what? God can sanctify you. And if he sanctify you, that's why he, that's how you know you're sanctified. Why? It's the spirit of God that makes you a saint. We almost got Catholicism in our, in our, in our theology. You understand? Know we almost got that. You know, people get all crazy, scared. Yeah, well, I'm just a brother. No, I'm a saint. Yes, I'm a brother, but I'm a saint. Well, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I reached that place yet. Yes, you are. Because God ain't got but this two things, saint and ain't. <laughs> now, you got to be one of them. Saint or ain't, but I am sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. When I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. It's the blood that sanctifies his church. Oh, praise God. I'm trying to quit, but I can't. I, I, I want to, but I can't. Man, I wouldn't care if I didn't eat nothing today at all. Because there's so many people bound up. And they're bound up because they don't know who he is. And here Jesus is trying to tell people, well, who do you say I am? Who do you think I am? Do you think God is on some kind of trip where he's trying to trip you up so you can be lost? Do you think a savior will stoop to the opposite and try to be, uh, uh, cause you to be lost? No. He came that you might have life and that life more abundantly. He came that you might be saved, not a little bit, but to the uttermost. It came that he might, oh, glory. And somehow in our thinking, people have told us about a Jesus. See, I thought Jesus was cookies and Kool-Aid when I first started going to church when I was in Sunday school classes. Well, I did. Because if you wouldn't give me Kool-Aid and cookies, God wasn't there. And I'm going to tell my mama, I don't want to go back to that land. I had all kinds of ideas about God. And then I finally realized that God wants you to know who you are yourself. I cannot be convinced. You cannot convince people of Jesus. I don't care how eloquent, I don't care how hard you try. You're never going to convince people of Jesus. You won't do it. But I tell you what, if you can get convinced yourself, you won't have to spend time trying to convince others. They'll be able to see that expressed out of your life. See, once you begin to realize, see, there's some things about God. I'm getting ready to close for real. I know, I know you said he said it 10 minutes ago. I did, but I, I didn't mean it then. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all. That's what that means. 
Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. There's some things you got to get in your spirit. It's time of soul talking. Forget not some, few, two. See, you don't even know him unless you know his benefits. Because a lot of things people are fighting right now don't realize they got benefits. How many of y'all got health insurance? Just, I, I just said that. But most of us do. They say it's a law. You got to have it now. I set mine in. I put Jesus at the bottom. But <laughs> If, I, if I've come this far without blue cross and shields and all that, i got to believe I can make it farther. The same one that bought me this far without it. Oh, I know, I know. Y'all call me crazy. I'm fine. I'm, I'm crazy. Yes, I is. Yes, I is. He said, but don't forget, you've got health insurance. And y'all done went through here. Some of y'all have read that better than you read the Bible. You got every deduction, you got every copay, you got all it down to an all. I can ask you right now about your insurance. You say, yeah, you know, I'm covered. I'm covered for this. I got covered for that. Yeah, I got covered for that too. You can sit here right now and tell me everything about your health insurance because you've read it carefully because you want to make sure that if you have purchased insurance, you're going to get the full. Ain't nothing like having dental benefits and you got a cavity and you won't get it fixed. closing I'm closing see but if you don't know what you ought to know it's gonna be hard for you to convince anybody of what you know because you really don't know and it was David that says I don't want to get these benefits he forgiveth All of thine iniquities. He healeth all thy diseases. He redeems my life from destruction. Uh -oh. He crowneth me with loving kindness and tender mercy. He satisfied my mouth with good things. He restores my youth. Some of us need to know who he is. You got doubts about your salvation. If you doubt your salvation because you don't know who he is. I know this is not so profound. Do you understand that? But I just, this morning, I was coming to church, and it's like, it's like the Lord impressed upon me. They don't know who I am. And I don't believe he's talking about all of us. And I, and, and I don't know him like I want to know him. You know what I found out? What I think I know, there's still so much more to know. I haven't exhausted him. I haven't got it all yet. But I do have to believe my benefit package here. I got to start believing my benefit package because it's going to help me to become a better witness to other people because I believe in my benefit. We sell, they sell jobs on benefit packages. You know that? How many of you would take a job that didn't have no benefits? Over a job that did. First thing I looked at when I hired on the sailors, benefit package. I went home. I didn't want to know how to do, I didn't want to know no union meeting stuff. I just want to know my benefits. I see no benefits in the union, but I did see some benefits in. They gave me some doctor care. I, I could get two physicals a year. I had dental, death, and everything, everything was covered. Now, do you think I would have bypassed that job and took a job at McDonald's that didn't have no benefits? 
if you knew what benefits you had, that's a sale in itself. Jesus has the best benefit package there is. From head to toe. I don't care if it's your mind, he's a free psychiatrist. I don't care what's wrong with you, he's got the cure for it. And when you begin to know who he is, you'll always look to him to be your cure. He'll be your healer. He'll be your helper. When you know who he is, quit letting people talk you out of Jesus, telling you that, well, you know, God, God ain't looking at you. God ain't liking you. God, God do love you. He is the only one I know can love anybody that's unlovable. He's the only one I know can love constant and not variate in his love. He's the only one I know. Who do you say I am, he says. If you had to go tell somebody today and you wanted to sell a product today about Jesus, what would you tell them? I'm not going to tell them about me. But I will tell them about the one who can benefit them. And the reason I know he can because I have experienced what he talks about. I'm not just talking off the top of my head. I know what I'm talking about. I know who I serve. I know who I'm, I know who loves me and I know who's in love with me. I know who I'm in love with. Some of you here right now, I'm getting real close. I know I'm competing with uh, briskets and everything else. Sometimes it's hard to know who he is when that smell gets in your nose like that. But if you're here right now, and maybe you're struggling in your mind and you're thinking, maybe, maybe someone's been telling you about the Lord in your life. They're trying to tell you what he ain't in your life. You know what people talk is what he ain't in their life. You need to talk to somebody who knows who Jesus is so they can tell you who Jesus is. You need to talk to somebody who got the benefit package and believes in it. Come on, stand with me. I got to let you go. He made mention one time, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It is. It's upon us. He has anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. Sent me to heal up broken hearts. But well, first thing happened a lot of times that your heart got to get broken before you can minister to broken people. Some of us here right now, you've been here, you've been worried, you're free. Come on, it's time now to put away all that. Jesus wants to introduce himself. He told Pete, who do you say I am? By the spirit of revelation, Pete says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Thou art the Christ. Thou art the anointed one. Thou art the Messiah. You are the Savior. But even still, having that understanding of the spirit, he still didn't understand it in his flesh. But then Jesus said, though, you know what I'm going to do, Pete? I'm going to build my church based upon this right here. I'm going to build my church up on those that can see and believe who I really am. If you believe that he is who we say he is, he is the only God. He ain't a bunch of gods. He's the one true and living God, the only wise God. If you find any other God besides Jesus, he ain't that wise. He's the only wise God. He's God eternal. He's the God of your salvation. He is the lifter up of your head. He is your strength. He's everything you'll ever need. The Bible says he is the great I am. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the bread. I am the light. I am the comforter. I am your advocate. I am your high priest. I'm your good shepherd. I'm your righteousness. I'm your faith. I'm your peace. I'm your love. Maybe in some of that you may have heard yourself. Maybe something you need. If you're here today and you can't find a way, come on, I want to introduce you to the way. If you're here today you say, I don't know truth, can I introduce you to truth? If you need a good lawyer, could I introduce you to Jesus? Some of us have been trying our cases outside of court. 
We've been trying our cases in the kangaroo courts of man. Come to Jesus. He represents you. He's your high priest. He has exonerated. He has totally forgiven. God doesn't halfway forgive. He forgives completely. He doesn't have a probationary period. He doesn't have a probationary time. Amen. When God forgives, he forgives. He's not holding it over your head. He's not going to come back next year and say, you know what you done? No. God heals and he forgives completely. If you are here and you have doubts in your mind about his forgiveness, would you please come? God wants to introduce himself to you today as a forgiver of all your sins. He wants you to come today and know that he is a healer of all your diseases. God wants you to come and be satisfied with what he will fill your mouth with today. And I believe if you don't even have the Holy Ghost in your life, God can fill you right now in Jesus' name. Fill your mouth with good things. You'll be speaking another tongue in which you will be glorifying God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I praise you. I worship you, Lord. Lord, who do man say that you are? No. Who do I say you are, Lord? I say that you're the Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and ending. You're the first and last. You was he that was dead and alive and alive forevermore. You are the king sitting on the throne. You are the king that made us kings and priests unto you. God, I know who you are. Oh, you have made me more than a conqueror. You have made me more than victorious. I know who you are. Come on, church. Let's stand right now as we pray. Oh, you already stand. I'm sorry. I already told you that. Let's, let's pray. Precious God. We're in this place today right now, and I know you're ministering by your spirit that we cannot see, those things we cannot re recognize from the outside. Boy, Lord, I pray if there be one in this place today that don't know who you are, would you please reveal yourself unto them? And Lord, reveal yourself by way of peace, bringing peace into their stormy life, bringing peace to their soul that they might know who you really are, a God of peace and not a God of disturbance, not a God of strife. God, I thank you and praise you for this privilege. God bless you today. God bless you today. God bless you today. God bless you today. I feel heaven wants to pour something into somebody right now if you'll just receive it. Come on. If you'll just receive what God's trying to give you, go ahead and receive that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Come on, open up your book. Get your benefit package out. Come on, open that book up and find out what God has for you. Come on, open that book up and realize one thing. I've been going through this and I didn't have to because it's already my benefit package. Some of you are on the road to destruction right now. And if you're only understanding your benefit package, you've been redeemed from destruction. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you right now, your mind is in turmoil and didn't even realize in your package there was peace. I thank you, Jesus. I worship you. I magnify you. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. God bless you today. Pray if you need to pray. Seek God. But please, whatever you do, know who you're serving. Know the Jesus of the Bible, not the Jesus of people. Know the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you.